The 1993 AC Delco Challenge Series on TNN is brought to you in part by The Wynn Oil Company, makers of quality automotive car care products. Remember, when it wins, it works. And by Mr. Goodrich, the GM expert at participating GM dealerships. And by Armorall, there is a fountain of youth, and we own the patent. There is just no greater expectation, particularly in the sport of motor racing, like the opening race of any season. And uh, this just makes your blood boil on the inside. The weather, if there's any flaw in this, it's the wind. It is gusting, and that 10 to 15 is probably a conservative number. It is blowing due west, meaning it's going down the back straightaway, the direction of travel the cars are going right now, and they go right head on into it down the front stretch. The track is a half mile in length. Each turn is a little bit different in terms of its banking. It shows 28 degrees there, but you'll find as you watch the race today that the drivers will like different lines in turns one and two than they prefer in three and four. 28 degree banking, high banked half mile racing. Is there anything more exciting than that? The starting grid. Well, he started from the point seven times in 1992. No surprise on the pole from Grand Rapids, Michigan, the Port City, Berger Chevrolet of Johnny Benson, and outside row one, Tony Raines in the ETR ENL Brokerage Chevrolet. Qualifying third, the fastest score to enter here this weekend. Best career finish for Kent Stauffer is a second. On the outside of Kent is young Jay Sauter, one of the stars of the future, perhaps, in this KC Chevrolet. Brand new colors, the defending series champion, Mike Eddy in the Goodwrench Pontiac starts fifth, car number 88. And on the outside of that row, Scott Hansen, welcome back after an early season injury in 1992, the Wisconsin Aviation Chevrolet. Starting seventh, a man with two career wins. He hopes to double that in 1993 is Glenn Allen Jr. Outside of Glenn is the veteran Bob Seneker. 37 times he's been on the pole, but he's qualified eighth today. One of four Fords in the top ten. The Yoder Ford Shoney's in Thunderbird of Todd Forbes on the inside and Tom Harrington, the former pro football player in the BFI Customer Service Oldsmobile on the outside of row five. And the rest of the 42-car starting grid. Row 6, Ken Schrader and Larry Phillips. Teammates, row 7, Jim Cooper. Keep your eyes on him. Tony Roper, rapidly improving sophomore driver. The 8th row on the inside, Gary St. Amant, brand new sponsorship. And Pat Bordeaux from Saginaw, Michigan. The ninth row, Mike Miller and Harold Fair. On the 10th row, side by side, cars numbered 01 and 24. Couple of rookies, Joe Bush, new to this league, was impressive in practice. The 11th row, Steve Holtzhausen, last year's Rookie of the Year, and Jeff Neal. Watch for him to move up. In the 12th row, Dennis Vogel and Steve Carlson. In the 13th row, out of Canada, Randy McDonald. Lots of experience on big tracks. And Brad Loney, one of the big surprises of 1992. In the 14th row, number 77, the year he was champion, Dave Watson returns. A.J. Cooper is on the outside. Then Bruce Lee, new colors this year, and local track specialist, Rick Beebe, car number 19. In the 16th row, are you winded yet? Joey Knott from Ohio. Jerry Churchill, another new entry from the Detroit area. Then Tom Jones in car number zero. And Russ Gamester, the former USAC open wheel champion. In the 18th row on the inside, car number nine, Dennis Lampman. His row mate is number two, Terry Wendy. And then David Anspa and Ray Skillman in the 37th and 38th starting position. We're not done yet. Roger Avans comes out of the Rocky Mountains and reaches number 75. Alec Pinsano from Windsor, Ontario. And then Larry Moore and Yale Conley. 42 cars on a half-mile racetrack. It's going to be crowded. A lot of new faces, a lot of new driver and team combinations. This one brand new. Gary St. Amant was the Canadian champion in the ASA five race series within a series in 1992. He's joined forces with car owner Mac McClellan. And a lot of folks think, Larry, that this guy might be the outside shot at a national championship this year. Glenn Allen has moved officially over to the Leroy Troop Stables. The car is numbered 15. It's painted red and white. Sponsored today by Quaker State and Turbo Blue. Uh, they were very close to uh, a sponsorship with cars colored and numbered that way. And that's how that number turned out being changed for the 1993 season. But this is one of the teams that everybody's looking at saying, Jesus, how tough are these guys going to be? Well, listen, Glenn was one of the fastest two or three cars in practice. He'll start seventh right behind the car number 88 of Mike Eddy, seven-time ASA national champion. And he'll be flying the Goodwrench colors this racing season. Oh, watch this carefully. Yes, it's the opening race. Yes, it's the first green flag. 42 stock cars. The world's most technologically advanced stock cars on a high bank, half mile paved racetrack. We're green. Tony Raines racing 
out of the state of Pennsylvania now takes the early lead, but Rob, there is smoke already trailing from the right rear quarter panel. The surprise, Larry, is the fact that Johnny Benson Jr., who told us pre-race that he was going to jump to the front, got a relatively poor start. He rides in the third position. Jay Sauter has come from the outside of row number two to run second, and here's a great battle for position. Scott Hansen back from an injury in 1992, already putting some pressure on the good wrench machine of Mike Getty. Smooth sailing all the way around. What a spectacular performance by a large contingent of new drivers to these extremely high speeds in a very short confinement, relatively speaking, in motor, motor racing terms. Everyone does a very special job. We are working on lap number four, and there's not so much as a wheel out of place at this point. We're extremely concerned about the start of this race. Twelve new faces to the, uh, the high seven, the high banks of high 70 <laughs> speedway. I'm just too excited. And uh, the car's now settling into a, almost a single file formation on this race course. There is Terry Winnie in that white number two. Oh, and there was a contact, and we have a spin in corner number four. Jerry Churchill, a couple of rookie drivers involved, and we have a crash outside of corner number four. It's Yale Conley and two cars coming together in a very serious way here in the front stretch. It is Alex Pinsano, Ray Skillman out of Indianapolis, involved in that was also Dave Anspaugh and Yale Conley, Jerry Churchill, the fifth cars. But five cars involved, and you're looking at uh, Ray Skillman, the racing car dealership owner sitting there moving around in his race car. His bodywork has been ripped completely off of that car. Ray is moving around, though. Car number 93 perched atop the Skillman machine, which is now completely without its body, sits on top of that one. That's the number 93 machine of Canadian Alec Pinsano. Now, let's watch turn four. You can see, I believe that's Jerry Churchill spinning down on the bottom of the racetrack, drifting up to the outside. And here come several cars down low with no place to go. Skillman makes contact with the outside wall, drifts down to oh. the bottom, Pinsano up on top. And here's, you can see, uh, late arrival is Dr. Yale Conley. He, of course, sits against the inside retaining wall. Well, the well. impact was just remarkable. You, you were kind of lulled into almost a sense of security uh, when Skillman and Pinsonall came together. The cars basically exploded, particularly Ray Skillman's car. And it's almost, it almost looks like a top fuel dragster or a funny car whose bodies explode when there's an impact. And that is a very, very unusual occurrence uh, in this ASA racing. All drivers are out of their race cars. We fear that something like this might happen, but all the drivers are safe, and we'll be back after this.